Hello, welcome back to the next part of the Crossroads tutorial series. This part covers Witchcraft, which is an entirely new brand of, uh, branch of the mod. This video is more than was made more than a year later since the previous parts, and when the previous parts were made, Witchcraft was not in the mod. It is now. This video is made on the Crossroads version on the sign in front of me. Things may have changed if you're on a newer version. So let's get started. On the, during the previous videos, when the previous videos were made, there were only two paths in the mod, alchemy and technomancy. And witchcraft was promised but not yet implemented. It has now been added. We unlock it in much the same way as the other branches. We need to discover all of the beam alignments other than void, and then we do something in our detailed crafter. And, this, and I can show you the recipe is paper around shears. If you're ever unsure about the recipe, just check JAI, as that's going to be more up to date than any video will ever be. Pop that in, and Witchcraft unlocked, as you can see on the top right, and the symbols filled in on the Detailed Crafter. Works the same as the other paths, and like the other paths, I can uh, also teach them to other people with sigils. Nothing special. Now, if we go in our guidebook, we will see the Witchcraft chapter has been unlocked which has a whole bunch of things, which we're going to cover in, this, in, in the next couple of videos. Now, now I should tell you about witchcraft. So, while alchemy was meant to be... Let's go in order. Technomancy was meant to be the most complicated path, and it was also meant to be the most powerful and the most dangerous. Hardest to use, hardest to use safely, but the rewards were largest if you were willing to go for it. And thematically, it was about time, time manipulation, portals, uh, uh, reality manipulation, that sort of thing. Alchemy was meant to, is meant to be a, mid, a middle path. It's thematically about chemistry and making new materials, and it's meant to be the medium difficulty, medium complexity, medium level of danger, right? While in technomancy, things can blow up your whole base, in alchemy, they can blow up your alchemy lab, <laughs> right? Witchcraft, and witchcraft is the newest um, entry, and it's meant to be the, the safest, simplest, least dangerous option, but also the least powerful. But, unlike the others, two paths, it's very much simpler to use. And all three paths, despite me saying that this is the most powerful and this other one is the least, each path does things none of the other paths can do. Only technomancy can manipulate time. Only, only alchemy can create all these interesting new materials and mess with gravity or do terraforming. And witchcraft is thematically about cloning and messing with life and death and organic things. And only witchcraft can do cloning and, uh, give, and do customization of the player and all sorts of other things. So... While I say that this is more powerful than that, each of them has their own special things that only they can do. So let's get into witchcraft, having explained the theme. So witchcraft is mixed between a few basic mechanics. There's a lot of one-off features. Oh, there's always those, you know, the gimmicks, the, the, the uh, toys, shall we call them. There's also cloning. And there's injection. And there's a few machines that help us make things. Let's start with the machines that help us make things. So we're going to look at stills. Now there's um, a potion brewing still. This is quite a simple machine. It's probably the, the simplest machine in witchcraft. And it just is for automating potions. Now, of course, you can automate potions in vanilla Minecraft. You don't need this machine to do it. You can do hoppers into a brewing stand. This machine is going to be a lot easier in certain ways because it doesn't use blaze powder, which has always been the, the sort of nightmare for normal potion brewing. It's also a lot faster than a brewing stand. So if you need to mass produce potions, this is, usually, is the way to go. 
instead of using blaze powder, it uses heat. Uh, if I get a cable, you have to connect the cable to the top. And I'm going to use a feature which has been added since the previous videos, which is just a creative heat reservoir. This is just a creative mode only block that I can use to get any temperature I like. <laughs> Um, in previous videos, I would have used some other cheaty source of heat. This is just more convenient. In reality, you would need to build a heat-producing setup. So this is our still. And if you look at the tooltip, most machines, they just want to be as hot as possible, and the hotter the better. This one, not quite. It needs to be above 75 degrees C to work at all. And it gets faster as it gets hotter, except once it gets above 100 degrees C, the boiling temperature of water it stops working at all. So ideally you want to get it as close to 100 degrees C as possible without going over. You don't want it to boil. Now I'm just going to show you this in action. If I just throw some potions in there, some, some water bottles in there and some nether wart, it just goes brewing. And this is the pretty decent speed. I can, it doesn't, it, and this machine is unlike the normal brewing stand in that it, it demands all three potions be brewed at once. That's another issue with trying to automate a vanilla brewing stand is that it'll happily brew with only one or two potions at a time, which is inefficient. Um, the still demands that all slots be used. So if we just let this go, this is of course going to make awkward potions. Of course, now we have to stare at a progress bar. <laughs> There we go. Now, another thing I'm going to mention is that Crossroads actually adds a recipe because it adds a recipe to make water bottles with ice and glass bottles. Some people may find this more useful than others. Of course, you can still fill bottles the normal way by right clicking on water. And I'm not going to demonstrate that if you heat this thing to 102 degrees, it just doesn't do anything for you at all. Um, okay. So that's a very simple machine to get us started, just to get us back into the speed of things. Now we're going to do the real ones. <laughs> Hydroponics trawl. And I'm not really going in any order. And it needs to be daytime for us to demonstrate this, so let's make it so. This is a way of automating a lot of different plants, even the plants you can't normally grow. So it requires a few things. It requires light, except for mushrooms, which, like in vanilla, grow in darkness, don't need light. But it needs light to work, sunlight. And it requires this liquid called fertilizer solution. Get how to make that in a minute. So if I take a tank of fertilizer solution, so if I get some of this, and we're going to get ourselves... Very simple connections, just to demonstrate this. Sim it looks simple enough. You put fertilizer solution in, and it needs a plant here. So let's demonstrate with a plant you can't grow in vanilla. So this thing can grow pretty much any plant, um, including ones that can't be grown by bone meal or thyme. So lily pads in vanilla, there's no way to grow them. Uh, but we can grow it with the trough. And now that I've put this in, you can see our fertilizer solution is draining, ticking away quite slowly. And I'm just going to put a bit more in. As long as this is going, it has a chance, each tick, each tick to grow or make progress towards growing. Now, we could sit here waiting, or I could speed this up a little. Bone meal also works on the hydroponic straw. So if I do that, you can see that it worked very well because it's now made 11 lily pads for us. So those would have grown on their own if we just waited long enough and given it enough fertilizer solution. And you can see this progress bar was, it has partially filled up towards making the next lily pad. Okay, and there's all sorts of things we can grow on this, right? You can, of course, grow the normal things like potatoes. Um, and so on and so forth. Here's the tricky part, because of course I'm not going to give you a simple grow anything machine. <laughs> Items aren't coming out of it. At all. Hopper, if you want to pull out items, you have to give this machine a redstone signal. 
Otherwise, it's not allowed. And items cannot be extracted from it automatically unless it has a redstone signal. So let's give it one. And now you can see that our hopper is working as normal. And it's draining out. But let's take a closer look here. A minute ago, this was like half full of fertilizer solution. And now it's empty. The reason is, is that when you give it a redstone signal, the bottom drops out. And not only can you can automation pull items out the bottom, but all the liquid spills out. So any liquid that's in this, when you open it up, is just lost. Totally. And in fact, if I try to put more in while it's open, it just immediately gets voided. So you so if you had so if I had a big tank of fertilizer solution here and I open it up, that would all get voided and I would waste all my valuable fertilizer solution. No good. So that's a, a meant to be an automation puzzle, is finding ways to time it so that you disconnect the inputs and don't and maybe time it so that there's no fertilizer solution in the machine when you open it up. That sort of thing, to, to find ways to, to, to not waste the liquid. The next machine is the formulation vat, which is used to make a, quite a few things, including our valuable nutrient solution. So as you, if you look at the tooltip, it's quite similar to the other vat that the, um, the potion brewing still, right? Again, this one works faster at higher temperatures, but it stops working at all above 100 degrees C, so you want to get it as close to 100 degrees C as possible without going over. And this is a pretty simple crafting mechanic. If we look at some of the recipes, there's several pages of them, but you put in a liquid and an item, and it uses heat and time, and it makes a thing. So we can make fertilizer solution with water and bone meal. And that one bone meal only makes 200 fertilizer solutions. So if you waste four buckets of it every time you open that uh, hydroponics thing, that's wasting um, 20 bone meal every time, which is horribly inefficient. And it's going to be how we make a lot of important liquids for witchcraft. Soul essence, uh, nutrient solution, which is not the same as fertilizer solution, and, and fertilizer solution. So we'll, we'll get into those. Okay. The next machine, is, the next thing we're going to cover is, is one of the gimmicks. We're going to cover the combustible cactus, the medicinal mushrooms, and the wheeze wart. I really should just turn off time. There, <laughs> it won't go night again. Now, these are three similar features, which can only be made if you have witchcraft enabled, of course. Please wart, combustible cactus, and what was the other one called? Uh, medicinal mushroom, right. <clears throat> and these each have their own purpose. The simplest one is the cactus. You plant it, and given time, it grows like a cactus. You know, if you give it time, eventually it'll grow to be a couple blocks tall like that. And it acts exactly like a cactus. You know, if there's a block next to it, it breaks, uh, that sort of thing, right? So this will make it break itself if it grows up there, right? Same as a cactus, except this is actually a fuel. Quite a good fuel, in fact. It smelts tw it's twice as good as coal, and you can grow it. Another little quirk of this stuff is that if it catches fire, uh, give it a moment. It's not fast. Fire there we go. It explodes, and the explosion can chain and set off other cacti, uh, combustible cacti. That's probably the simplest one of these. The next one is going to be the mushroom. Now, if I plant this, you'll see it won't let me because it's too bright. Like normal mushrooms in this game, it needs to be grown in darkness or, again, like normal mushrooms in this game, on mycelium. Now, 
This mushroom spreads very, very fast. Most people don't even realize this game has a mushroom spread mechanic, because for normal mushrooms, the red and brown ones, it's very, very slow. But in darkness, on the appropriate sort of ground, these mushrooms, the mushrooms can spread on their own to a limited extent. Medicinal mushrooms do the same thing, except their spread is very, very fast. And it's also not unlimited. If you put these in a dark cave and leave for one of these in a dark cave and come back in an hour, the every tile in the cave will have one of these mushrooms on it. However, unlike the normal brown and, and red mushrooms, you can't make them into tall variants. They don't have a bone meal thing. This is the only way to grow them. And these two have their uses in crafting. They're used for some potions, mainly. They're also made to use used to make mutagen and medicinal mushroom powder which is its own uses and the real you and and these are not unimportant things witchcraft has a lot of tie-ins with the brewing system and there's a lot of potions that you want to have on like a mass-produced basis which is why we get we add the potion brewing still so these things make the potion of neutralization which is important if you, it's basically like a bucket of milk in potion form which is more important than you think, and you'll see why. But you can drink it, uh, throw it as a splash potion, all the usual things. And if we, and the powdered form can be used to make potion of blindness, potion of nausea, and potion of sedation. These two cannot be crafted in the normal game, so this is a way of getting them. And potion of sedation is also really important. Now, I'm going to show you why. Let me show you what a potion of sedation does. Now, on a player, it's pretty boring. It's just a generic debuffs. You know, it makes you slower. Actually, let me get use neutralization potion just to show this off. That yes, it's like a milk bucket, right? Now, this version, if I, if however, on a mob or on a pig or something like that, New, uh, sedation is much more interesting. Did I hit the creeper? I think I hit the creeper. No, I didn't. Let's try again. Now I hit the creeper. Now this potion lasts for eight minutes. This creeper's AI is disabled. Let me... Now I'm guessing you don't know what that means. Let me hit all of these because so this won't be unsafe. I am going to go into survival mode. Oh, uh, not difficulty. Uh, game mode. Survival. There we go. I'm in survival mode, and I'm on normal difficulty. This is a creeper. It's not angry at me. It's not moving. It's not trying to explode. It won't fight back. It just stands there because its, it's brain has been disabled. It's basically unconscious. And guess what? This works on pretty much every mob, except for bosses. Pig won't run away. Uh, so hostiles won't fight. Uh, you, in fact, and become totally safe. Passives become basically little trophies. Um, that sort of thing. It, they just sort of stand there like statues. And of course, we can make this wear off faster using this, or we could just wait for it to wear off. I'm going to go into peaceful difficulty, or I will forget that there are creepers everywhere. That potion of sedation is going to be quite useful for some of the other mechanics in, the, in, the, in witchcraft. Now, the next thing I wanted to show was Wheeze Wart. Now, if you're familiar with the game Oxygen Not Included, that is where this is from. <laughs> now, you plant this. And it's a, this is a too tall plant. So if I bone meal it, this is, this is fully grown. And, oh, it just did the thing while I wasn't looking. How inconvenient. <laughs> I am going to put a heat cable on top of it. Now this may seem very stupid. If I wait long enough, and by long enough, this could be a while, <laughs> Just gonna plant some more. Uh, shouldn't it shouldn't take that long? But there we go. 
See, that one did a puff of white smoke and made a sound, and suddenly this heat table's really cold. Anytime a wheeze warp does that that white puff, any heat thing directly above it gets dropped down to basically absolute zero. It Well, specifically it drops the temperature by 100,000 degrees C, which in practice means hits absolute zero. This is a cooling system in plant form. Now, infrequently hitting a, a single cable isn't very useful, but if this were a heat reservoir, then suddenly dropping that down to absolute zero every 30 seconds or so is really useful because that can keep a lot of things cold for a long time. So now this is a cold source in plant form. But there's a, there's a, it, and that, that's if it hits the reservoir directly, right? If it only hits the cable, that's pretty boring. Oh, just hit the reservoir. Now the reservoir is at absolute zero, as you can see. And if I attach a cable to it, it can keep a whole lot of cables or a whole lot of machines cold for a very long time. But the, these these warts have a few catches to them. First of all, I planted it. This is growth stage one. These are growth stage two. This is growth stage three. It goes brown. These grayed out wheeze warts, their final life stage, are basically useless. They do not do the puff of mist. These don't do the puff of mist. Only these two tall blue ones do the puff of mist. That's use that's the only reason for to use these plants. So you don't want fully grown wheeze warts, you want partially grown wheeze warts. The good news is they grow from stage one to two very quickly, and they stay in stage two for a really long time before getting to stage three. But once they're in stage three, their only use is to harvest them, get the seed, and plant another one. They don't drop seeds very often. Uh, well, no, they always drop one seed. It's rare that they drop a second one. So usually you only just get enough to replant. And you can absolutely use these with automated systems. Like, dispensers can plant these. You can harvest them with pistons. Uh, there are absolutely ways uh, to automate the keeping of a bunch of wheeze warts at around stage two of life. But yes, this means there is an entirely plant-based source of cold that can go to absolute zero in the mod now. And I think that's pretty neat. <laughs> and it basically runs for free. Now, the next thing we're going to cover is syringes. And then I'm going to call the video here, and we're going to go on to the next one, which is going to be all about cloning, souls, and spoilage. Everyone's three favorite things. Okay. So the syringe. This is a very valuable item. <laughs> Not valuable, an important item. It does a lot of things. So it may look like just a little syringe, but it does, like, three different things, maybe four depending on how you count. Let's start with the easy ones. You can use it to inject a potion. So let's say I've got this potion of leaping, which lasts for three minutes. Okay, that's important. It lasts for three minutes. I'm going to put it in my off hand, and I hold the syringe in my main hand, and now I'm just going to right click. And now, if it would, and now I have jump boost for six minutes. If you inject a potion with a syringe, it lasts twice as long as taking it normally. You can also inject like splash potions. So this take, so normally you'd have to throw these, and it would last eight minutes. But now it lasts sixteen. So it's a more efficient way to admin take potion to administer potions, and. I can also administer them to mobs. Now you'll have to take my word for it. We're not going to stand here with a t with a with a timer for ten minutes. Um, but if I, for example, get a pig or any mob mob really, and I shift right click it to target the thing I'm looking at instead of targeting me, it got hit, and now it has um, luck for ten minutes, twice the duration. Like I said, we're not going to stand here for 10 minutes and verify it actually lasted that long. Take my word for it. 
that we can also administer neutralization potions this way. Sorry, what potion was that? Yeah, neutralization. Yeah. So if you want, you can administer these on mobs and and, and get rid of their, their effects that way. And by the way, if you use this on a potion that doesn't have a duration, like instant health, instead of making it last twice as long, it would heal you for twice as much. So I don't even know how much a regular instant health potion does, but if I were in survival mode and hurt, that would have healed me for twice as much as normal. Okay, so it's a way to administer potions both to you and to others around you for double as good. Okay, that's useful, I guess. Let's look at another thing it can do. It can also be used to draw blood. <laughs> We're going to talk more about this in the next video. Don't worry about that right now, but keep in mind syringes can be used to draw blood. Okay. There's also a machine that it has an interaction with. We're going to get into that in the next video. And the last thing I'm going to show is that there's an item called genetic plasmids. We'll show how you make these in the next video. Again, I'm going to be saying that a lot. <laughs> this is the last time. But these are very difficult. These are very annoying to make. And they're very powerful. And I'm going to show you exactly what it does in survival mode. Now I'm going to get, let's say, fire resistance for three minutes. And I'm going to go into survival mode. Okay. First, I'm going to put this in my offhand. And you can read the description here, but I'll just show it. And now I'm going to right-click. Okay, my syringe has turned yellow. It is now coated with genetic plasmids. Okay. The next injection I do with this is going to be permanent. So before, injections lasted twice as long. With this, they're going to last forever. So this is a fire resistance potion for three minutes. And now it lasts, that is infinite time. It will never wear off unless I die or drink a neutralization potion or milk. Except we also got this debuff called genetic strain. And if you look at my maximum health down here, it has decreased by one heart. For every permanent potion effect, your maximum health decreases by one heart. But I can keep stacking these, right? I can get regeneration two forever. <laughs> oh, and I also need more plasma because it used up the genetic plasmids on my syringe to do that. So I can basically make myself a super serum and give myself superpowers. And now I've got regeneration 2 and am fireproof forever, but I have reduced my maximum health by two hearts. And if I die, I lose all this, and it goes back to normal. But I can just drink milk or a neutralization potion to get rid of all the potion effects, and it's like I never injected myself at all. All back to normal. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to cover uh, cloning, spoilage, and the auto-injector, and souls. Yeah, we just did all, this video was all the one-off little features. The next video is the systems in witchcraft. See you then.